Hey YouTube, it's Wisconsin Shoe Guy here, and we're, this section is called WTP, Is It Worth the Price? And so I thought what I would do is I would start off this section with um, an actual comparison of what some of these shoes cost. Um, I, I tried to do list prices. If they happen to be on sale right now, I noted it here. But I think that this is an important way of looking at the, the value of shoes because they, they are very different. Uh, so on the left, I have the Loke Buckingham. Uh, these retail at $314. Uh, then next, I have the um, Allen Edmonds University. Uh, these retailed at $385 when they were available. They are currently no longer available. Uh, but a brand new pair of Allen Edmonds is typically $395 now, so, uh, or $425. So uh, it kind of gives you the same ballpark. Uh, the Eves in gray. Um, these retail for $450, uh, but uh, the current price on them is $359. Uh, by the way, a lot of these are foreign, so I translated the currencies into dollars based on today. Uh, the next is the Vast Budapest. The, those are, uh, they retail at $616 uh, today. And then the um, uh, last on the right, this is the um, Heinrich Dinkelacher uh, Buddha. Uh, and that retails at $795 today. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of the, the value difference in the shoes. Um, and, and the two on the right are handmade. Uh, the three on the left are not. Uh, they are made by machine, uh, but they are often referred to as handmade because it is a person holding the shoe, uh, running it through a machine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna focus on these three because this is gonna be the primary part of what we do today. And then I'll do a follow-up video where I'm just looking at the handmade uh, ones. So these are, again, the Loke, the Allen Edmonds, and the um, Eves and Gray. And what I wanted to do today was I wanted to focus on uh, a couple different things. First, let's understand what makes them all the same. These are all what they call short wings. And that is because they have a wing it goes around the shoe um, and um, it is short. Uh, this is in comparison to a long wing, which goes all the way around the shoe. And I did another video on those. You can uh, check that out. But the, um, the, the short wing is uh, probably your most traditional wing tip. Uh, as you look at um, other options that are out on the market, um, almost all spectators are short wings uh, because they'll have this piece here a different material um, and then um, sometimes they'll have a different piece here um, you know on the on the facing so uh, different uh, different styles uh, a lot of different uh, things here uh, this is your traditional wing tip uh, this is a, what they call a u-cap wing tip so it's not really a wing tip it's more like a u-tip and that's because it doesn't have the little wing area um, but um, still very much the same design of the shoe and the rest of the way around uh, these are all what they call a full brogue. And, um, you know, this is the same thing. You can see it here now. Um, the spacing between the, the first part and the second part is different. Um, how uh, the, the heel is different. The, there's a lot of differences between the shoes, but we'll, we'll get to those in a little bit. Um, but uh, these have leather soles. These are using rubber soles. And then these are leather soles again. So, uh, so, so let's talk a little bit about ways to measure quality. Um, and, and, and let's also look at design. Um, one of the first and obvious things to me about the design is the lacing. If you look at the lacing on the eaves in gray, um, they are roughly the same distance at the bottom and then they slowly get narrower. Okay. So it kind of goes that way. So if you have a V gap, um, which is these things separate as they're, as your foot's inside, um, it can actually look uniform. Uh, cause I think, and, and if you don't, and it closes all the way, it kind of tapers and, and gets that little narrow, um, feature there. If you look at the Allen Edmonds here and Allen Edmonds is consistent with this across all of their, uh, Oxford shoes, the, uh, the design is just really, really narrow. It's very, very close. Uh, to the point where it's not a design, it's just functional and it's right there. When you look at the Loke, this is a very European design 
and it's all very wide, but instead of tapering, it's all wide. So again, kind of a subtle difference, um, but if you know what to look for and you spend a lot of time looking at shoes, which I clearly do, probably too much if you ask my wife, uh, then um, you know you start to see uh, differences as, as you look at them. So now the uh, medallion on each of them is different. You can see this has, um, you know, this kind of pattern, almost like a vase with a flower in it. Uh, this looks like it has the bottom of a fleur-de-lis, uh, but it stops, which makes sense given the pattern. And then this looks like it has a, um, uh, the bottom of a fleur-de-lis as well. Um, so very, very similar, but uh, a different pattern. So this is obviously larger. Um, so if you look at them side by side, you can see they're roughly the same pattern, but there's um, uh, the the pattern is actually different, but the overall shape is the same. So just something to see there. Um, so as we as we look at this and as we um, kind of uh, look at other things that are different about them, you'll notice this last shape has a straight edge down at the bottom. Uh, they call that a chisel last. This is actually what they would probably call a soft square because it's almost square, uh, but not quite. I mean, the square would be wider. We, we, and that's pretty unpopular among shoe aficionados. Um, and this is what they would call an almond shape um, because it's, uh, it's, more, it's not pointed, it's rounded at the toe, but um, definitely kind of equidistant on both sides. So uh, that's a different, that's a more traditional um, last. Now, if you look at it this way, um, there's definitely a high instep on this shoe. Um, so that is a, a, a difference there. And when you look at this one, uh, it's slightly lower, but not, not significantly. Um, as we look at other differences in the shoe, uh, you know, the, the distance here between this brogue line is relatively similar. Um, I would say on the Ellen Edmonds, it's about the same. Um, and here in the Eves and Gray, it's slightly narrower, um, certainly not uh, not significantly so. So, um, so that's a little bit on design. Uh, you can also see the heel caps. Um, heel cap goes a certain distance in. As we look at it, I think the Allen Edmonds is a little bit less. Eves and Gray, um, even even less. The Eves and Gray um, doesn't have a outer piece here along the uh, along the edge like the Allen Edmonds does, um, and uh, the Loke also does not. So, again, small uh, small differentiating features, but uh, these are the things that shoe designers uh, are doing and and get paid to. You can also see that the uh, Vamp cover here, um, there's a nice distance here, and it goes back quite a bit further. Here you can see it's actually touching. And here there's a small distance in between. Again, that probably has more to do with their production method. I would say that the Eves and Gray looks like it was probably produced for the size where the Allen Edmonds and the Loke, because they're far more mass produced shoes, probably are one set of uh, um, uh, uppers uh, are fitting multiple sizes. And uh, that, that looks like that might be why they do that that way. So. Uh, just uh, some small observations as we look at it. Uh, now, if we look at the stitch density here to look at quality, um, you can see the stitch density is pretty tight. Um, the, the broguing is very small. Uh, they have a, uh, the large broke holes, and then they have this pattern of four small holes, um, which is uh, quite nice uh, and very, very detailed. Um, and uh, I think they do a pretty nice job with it. Of course, they also do this patina on here where they have the dark toe and then the dark heel. Um, and uh, you can see there where the color goes behind it. Uh, this was also polished. This is the way it is out of the box. Very, very nice there. Uh, as we look at the uh, Allen Edmonds, uh, this, is, um, uh, this had a nice polish to it. Probably worn down a bit because I wore it. Um, I have worn the Eves and Gray too, so that did not wear down. Um, you see the brogue holing is quite large comparatively, and it has the small brogues, uh, but it just has two. It doesn't have a pattern there. So when you look at them side by side, 
how you get the light there. There's a pretty big difference. And the eaves and gray certainly looks much, much more refined um, and, uh, and putting a little bit more in detail there. Now, that's not to take anything away from the Allen Edmonds. This is a stylistic choice, uh, but something that they do. Now, as you're looking at these Allen Edmonds, the other side of this is look at how far away the pinking is from those stitches. Um, so it can flap out and, you know, it can catch on things and, and so forth. So uh, that is a, um, uh, I, I, that is probably would be defined by Allen Edmonds as a mark of style. And I would look at it and say that that's more of a mark of quality. Um, I would expect it to be very, very small. Like here, it's very, very tight um, to it. And then up here, it's farther apart. I don't think it should be um, far apart. Now that's my opinion, I'm not an expert. But then let's take a look at the eaves and gray. Well, first, they don't have pinking, but look at the distance there. There's no opportunity for a flap or anything like that. This is very, very tight. And I think it looks a little bit slicker. So let's take a look at the look. Uh, the look has uh, a little bit of distance there. They got some kind of a mess up there with the, the I don't know if the pinking got caught on something or what that is. It is it is farther away, certainly farther away than it is on the edge without the pinking, which makes sense because the pinking should be in addition to the, the um, uh, to the material, but um, it is a lot closer than it is on the Allen Edmonds. And the stitch density on the Loke also quite a bit closer together, it looks like, than on the Allen Edmonds. So Take a look here, that's the look, that's the Allen Edmonds, that's quite a bit different. So I'm gonna say, let's take a look here at the stitch density between the eaves and gray. I gotta make sure I get the light right so you can see it on camera. And then you have it on the look. I would say the look is much closer aligned to the eaves and gray in this particular example. So, um, then let's take a look at soles. Uh, the uh, the look um, is a nice Goodyear welted, handcrafted in England. Uh, you can see the uh, the groove that the sole is set in is very nice. They've done some uh, sole work here, um, so they they put this pattern into the sole. Um, and uh, look at that heel; it's nice. They've got the little rounded red air. Um, the round area for the um, the rubber, and then they've got the, um, the leather piece here um, so that it clicks a little bit more and also wears a little bit better. Um, and these have had quite a bit of wear, and you can see that that heel is not wearing down quickly, which I think is another uh, area that we would like. These have the rubber. You can see that the stitch density um, on these soles is quite a bit larger um, further apart than it is on the others. Um, also had some wear. Not uh, not significant. The eaves in gray only been worn once, um, uh, but their sole, um, you know, it's fairly wide. I think that the the waist here is narrower, which is nice. Uh, they have this beautiful pattern in the sole. Of course, they dyed the sole, which is nice. Um, so the, I would say that the stitch density on the sole is not as high as it is on the loke. So we look at them together. It's not, it's hard to get the light just right because uh, these are pretty well set in the shoe. I don't even see the stitches all the time. They're, they're pretty, pretty well in there. Um, at least those are. Uh, if I look on the other side, it might be easier to see. And uh, so they're a little bit wider, but uh, you know, the look is, uh, pretty high quality. So, um, so th that, uh, if you look at the edging, um, you've got some fudging and, um, you know, pretty clean looking on the outside there. Allen Edmonds along the outside, also very clean. It's clearly a rubber sole, so it's not like they had to, um, I'm sure they had to mold it to the shape of the shoe. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just cut. Here you've got some nice finishing. They have the fudging here as well. And then they fit, they finished it with this groove in the sole. 
so you can see that as well, which is a nice feature. This is a little bit more rounded on the edges. So here you have the, the upper of the shoe on the eaves and gray, clearly a denser construction. The um, sole on the loke uh, with a little bit more density and a little bit more finishing. Uh, now that again is a stylistic choice. Um, I would say that looking at it from here, you can see that the sole on the eaves and gray is a bit thicker. Um, also a stylistic choice, but also a mark of quality materials that they used. So um, overall, I'm going to say that the Loke is definitely worth the price. Uh, the Allen Edmonds is, uh, is very good, um, but I'm going to say that it's, it's questionable whether or not the difference between the Allen Edmonds and the Loke is worth the price. Uh, I would say that the upper construction quality for the Eves and Gray is quite a bit better uh, than it is on the, uh, on the, on the Loke, but the sole is, um, is not. Okay, just, just my opinion based on what I saw. Um, so I would say that the, uh, uh, the Eves and Gray is probably pretty good based on their sale price, but I'm not sure that it would uh, justify based on their list price. So that is uh, my take on these three short wings. Um, and I will be back uh, next time to talk about the two derbies uh, that are also short wings. So uh, we will... Uh, we will be back next time. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy signing off, and thank you for watching.